Hello and welcome once again to my Let's Play series. So in the previous episode we finally managed to establish a mining base on the moon that was made up of two large rovers, one of them being the mining equipment itself and the other one being a fuel carrier. Unfortunately what happened, and I'll show you that in just a second, is that um, they collided while trying to dock. We managed to do a successful rendezvous on the surface and as we were landing they collided and some solar panels were lost and some expletives were uttered off um, away from earshot. So unfortunately the result is the mining base itself is not generating enough power to sustain itself. It, will, it is now slowly draining its battery reserves and when it runs out it will no longer be generating uh, any more ore and therefore no more generating any uh, fuel. So, as you can see these used to have matching pairs on the front and for some reason we had a slight physics glitch and that's what I'm blaming it on. Um, this rover as it was coming into dock it sort of flew forward just a little bit out of nowhere and it ruined this radiator here which is now just a stub and it ruined these solar cells and somehow I managed to destroy this one as well if I try to extend this one I said extend all solar okay come on any second now Okay, um, there we go. So this particular solar panel um, is dead. It had its um, body ripped off and now it's just a stub remaining, as well as this one um, and this one here. So what we need to do now is we need to uh, build, well we basically need to deliver some more solar panels, you know. Um, and the trick is, how do we do that? So, what we have on the mining base rover is we have these small docking ports on either side. And we have lar well, we have regular sized docking ports at the front and at the back, like that. So these are, I mean, all of these are nice and high off the ground, which is cool. These are intended to be used um, you know, between these two rovers, they're supposed to dock together. And uh, the smaller ones are intended to be use, used in orbit by smaller craft uh, to refuel. Unfortunately, um, we're not in orbit at the moment, but, 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 because these ports, they dock together. So they can come up side to side and kind of try really hard if their wheels don't collide, they can dock there. So what I'm thinking, is we'll have a small docking port and then a little bit of uh, girder and with some solar panels on it maybe a little bit of um maybe even some fuel cells and we'll dock it onto this guy who goes into orbit then when he comes down he'll have them attached either side and then it'll have another small docking port on the far side that will then dock onto this so this one, the fuel carrier, will actually deliver the uh, power generation cells to the mining module. Tricky bit is, this one needs enough fuel to be able to get up in orbit. So let's just make sure that, let's just make sure that its fuel uh, supplies are adequate. So the, yeah, we only need liquid fuel. And if we can get this guy into orbit, okay, I like that. All right, uh, we'll reduce the pump level on this. Right, and uh, I'll activate the pumps on this one. Uh, maybe this one? No. Pump options. So it'll pump liquid fuel. I don't want it to pump oxidizer. 
Okay, pump is on. Okay. And now this guy. Okay, that's still not enough. That is still not enough. So as you can see, we're spending 7.8 units of power. Uh, we really need to be making that back before we run out of power. Okay, that is not enough um, for this guy to make it into orbit and back. At least I don't think it is. With these nuclear engines, you never know. He might have enough. I don't know. Uh, we'll have to we'll have to detach him to get the calculations up. Um, but first, I'm going to try to shut down some of these uh, some of these drills and see what we can do about this power output. I mean, the ore at the moment is full, so. Okay, we're definitely making power now. A little bit of heat as well, so I might deploy one of these radiators, ones that we haven't blown up. Okay, that definitely puts us in... Um, opposite direction, so I'll shut this one down. Wow, a single drill makes that much difference. Okay, so that's negative 4.2. What is that telling me? That means that we're making energy? We're making energy. There we go. So yeah, a single radiator just wasn't doing the job, so that was slowing down the whole operation. So now the ore is starting to slowly come down. The uh, fuel reserves are going up. All good things. Okay, so what I'll let them do now is, now that we're making positive energy, um, I will leave the base and let it do its thing until it fills up with fuel so that it can do its first ever delivery. While that's happening, we're going to go back to the Space Center and design some power modules. Okay, so what are our funds? 343k missions. Test a heat shield for 4 or 5k, no. Solar orbit build a solar orbital station facility supporting 10 kerbals, 4,000 units of liquid fuel. Stability for 10 seconds, put station in orbit of the sun. Antenna docking port can generate power. Uh, it's a pretty hefty, um, pretty hefty advance and a great completion bonus. Seismic survey is a minimus. Seismic readings on the surface at alpha site, beta site, and gamma site. A nice advance and an expire of uh, 15 years. So we'll take that. Two tourists. Um, doesn't seem to say anything about advance. 
Uh, fly by Minmus, land on Minmus. So this one is, uh, let's see, 48k, 8k, 8k, so 16. Uh, so that's about 60k. 80, about 90,000 for this lot. Yeah, why not? Uh, test a heat shield, land a Kerwin. <laughs> yeah, why not? And build a new orbital station. Yeah, it looks like we've got a bit of rain. So build a new orbital station on a solar orbit. You know, why not? Why not? I think we can do this. So let's do that as well. So that brings up the funds a little bit more. Um, let's just quickly do that mission where we test the heat shield. Just to get it out of the way. Okay, just making sure what the heat shield actually is. Heat shield 0.65 landed. And what do we do to test it? From the test, use the run test option part of context menu. All conditions are met. Carbon and landed. Good enough for me. So uh, let's see. Stay put, Nick. Uh, there we go. Yep. Reason I'm actually doing this mission, not because it's going to give us a tremendous deal of funds, but uh, every time you finish a mission, uh, the mission manager says, "Great, you can do another one." So it prevent prevent sorry, it presents some fresh missions for us to do. Okay, hey, let's make sure. So Kerbin landed. Right click, run test. Done. Contract complete. Come on. No way. Let me try that one again. Oh, jeez. Okay, here we go. Uh, we've got some good data here. Thank you. Let's see what other missions we've gotten out of that. Mongrel, vertical takeoff lift engine, splash down on Kerbin. Okay, we need to actually splash down with this one. No, I will do without that one. Okay, now back to our generation of power. Okay, you can go away. Let's see. So we need our lunar uh, violetless lifter, mining base miner, comms delivery. No. Uh, we need our lunar explorer. Uh, moon rescue. No, I'm an explorer. Uh, I'm explorer too, really. 42k, is that all? What's the this one look like? So nine thousand nine hundred and nine thousand two hundred ninety one delta V. I think we'll go with this one. This one looks really good. A whole load of delta V, and we don't have to worry about um, really anything else. It's very cheap, forty two k. Yes, I think this one will do nicely. This one doesn't even have to land, and of course it is its own relay as well. I think we're, we've about had enough relays by now, but you know, another one can never go astray. Okay, well, 42k, I just kind of turned that down. So, let us make a little power generation module to attach to the nose. Okay, structural. Uh -huh. Let's see. Okay, so that's taken 500 delta V off. I suppose that is bound to happen. Let's have a look at power generation electrical. It's 
So how much does this thing weigh? Uh, 240 kilos. Cool, we'll do that. Next, let's attach some solar cells. Like that. Just move it up. Come on. Beautiful. And of course, a matching Duck Import Junior on the other side. So what this will do is, when we attach it to our the side of our mining base, these things will open up. So they will collide. As soon as they rotate, they will collide. Let me demonstrate. See? They will clip right into each other. That is not acceptable. Okay. So, it's just gonna have to go straight up. That's okay. Alternatively, we can just have them go out sideways as wings. That might work. Let's find out. Uh, they still clip. Okay, fine. Let's move them out a little bit. There we go. That's more like it. No more clipping. Beautiful. Okay, and can we put two of these? We can. It drops our delta V down to 7,000, but that is sh should. Sorry, that should still be plenty. And just to keep the whole thing stable, uh, because we're going to have some off center drag happening, I'll just rotate this one around. So that way we have roughly the same level of drag on both sides. Lovely. That will do. Now let's make sure we get some rigidity happening in there. So of course some struts. That should keep it nice and steady. And we don't really need this. <laughs> okay, so that clipped onto that side. That's fine. This should keep it, keep it nice and steady. I don't think we'll need a fairing, because these should not have a terrible amount of drag, although you never know. So that drops our delta V down to just under 7... Just under 7k. I think that'll do. And that brings our price tag up to 66k. There. So this, this lot costs 20,000. Uh, it's amazing how much this stuff costs. Okay, so we're going to call this one an unmanned power gen delivery. And why not? We'll give it a version number as well. Designed to deliver twin power packs to the moon. Uh, mining base. Good. Save that. And let's see how it flies. Just quick double check of the staging. So engines, girders, radial decouplers, more decouplers. Uh, interesting. This one doesn't even asparagus. This one's sort of an onion stage rather than an asparagus, but that's fine. A swivel, a decoupler, and then this one. I'm really happy with this one. This one looks really good. Hey, okay, save that and launch.
A little bit of wobble there, but nothing, nothing critical. Close that. All right, where is our mech jib? Our mech jib is not here. We need our mech jib, so recover this, please. Okay, let's make sure we can get Mikjib in here. Yep, definitely not there. Okay. And where's our Mikjib? Here somewhere. There he is. That'll do. On the side. Good. You know what? While I'm here, we may as well convert this to actually do asparagus. We get way more uh, delta V that way. So that one. Okay, that's way too low here. Lovely. And do another one. Uh, it looks like I got him right the first time. That's good, except instead of attaching to the rocket, they will feed the next stage. Okay, a slight... Wait! Getting a little few lags here that's causing our um, UI to mess up. So let's try that one again. So this one goes in here. There we go. I love that memory manager. It allows us to uh, extend the heap size and reduce the spontaneous lag. Anyway, so we have our struts already connected. Good. Let us change our staging. So, center engine fires regardless. These engines fire regardless. So this one needs to stage first. Because these will be empty first because they're draining in there. And these will be empty because they're draining in there. Then we have this stage, so that gives us a couple hundred extra delta V, which is nice. Save that. Just making sure our thrust to weight is still good. So our thrust to weight drops right around stage four. So when stage 4 detaches, we got a thrust to weight of 0.82, and then we got a thrust to weight of 1.54. So it's going to be dicey. If we don't have the thrust to weight, um, we're going to actually plummet. Then again, relatively small risk. Let's see how it flies. It's so much easier when you haven't got a great deal of uh, finances invested in a rocket. You can just fly it and see how see how it lands of course it really helps if it's unmanned as well okay got a little bit of wobble again alrighty so auto oh, where it is where is it descent guidance engage autopilot let us do it Three, two, one. Okay, good lift off of 1.18 thrust to weight.
got a little bit of roll induced at the moment. Just, whoa. A little bit of roll happening here. I'm just interfering a little bit with the controls to try to stabilize it. Okay, looks like we're good. Really have to watch that. Even though it's an autopilot, the autopilot will eventually oscillate away and ruin your craft if you're not watching it. Okay, first asparagus detached. We have a thrust to weight of 1.2. That is good. Still needing a little bit of help just trying to keep it steady. Just giving it a couple of little kicks in the roll as it's trying to oscillate still, but doing well. Approaching Mark 1. We are at Mark 1. Okay, for some reason we're tipping over. Okay, I'm just interfering with the uh, controls again, just trying to keep it nice and steady. Okay, still getting that roll happening. Looks like we're steady. A bit more drag happening from that nose than I was expecting. I and mean, I was expecting some, but not, not for it to tip over like this. Twenty-three kilometers. This is very much an involved autopilot. I'm having to sort of guide the autopilot. Almost defeating the purpose of the autopilot. Okay, Mach 3, second asparagus detached. One thousand meters per second, three thousand six hundred kilometers per hour. Approaching thirty kilometers altitude. This is definitely not a hands-off launch, but I am definitely okay with that. If we make it to orbit, I'm more than happy to help it along. Horizontal speed, approaching Mach 4. Horizontal speed at 1200 meters per second, Mach 4. Our thrust to weight is at 1.08. It's a very shallow ascent. Thrust to weight at 5.4 Mach, approaching 2,000 meters per second. Vertical speed at 55 meters per second and rising. 
Apoapsis at 39 kilometers. Okay, approaching critical temperature percentage for the solar panels. Adding a little bit of roll in there to try to help them along, try to help them cool down. Engine shut off. Very dicey ascent this, but it looks like we are going to make it. 21 meters per second delta V remaining in that first center stage. Periapsis now is at 22 kilometers altitude. We are near orbital speed at the moment. Beautiful. We're going to space today. Fifty six kilometers, Mach seven. Executing atmosphere in sixty seconds. Seventy kilometers altitude, we are in space. That was a very dicey ascent, but uh, I'm glad we made it in the end. We almost lost a couple of solar panels, uh, just managed to sort of rotate the craft in a sort of rotisserie fashion to try to distribute that heat uh, to other components. Okay, in position for our circularization maneuver. We only need 78 meters per second, uh, but we only have 10 of that in the first stage. So first stage jettisoned. And we are in a steady orbit. We've done well. And there is the moon in the distance. Let us plot a course to get there. That will definitely do. Okay, and I think I will let Megjib do that for us. So, maneuver planner, please execute next node. While it's doing that, I'll deploy at least one solar panel so we don't run out of power en route. Lovely, we have positive power generation and we're headed towards our first maneuver node.
Okay, good solid burn. Beautiful. <laughs> there we go. Okay, we are in stable orbit around the moon. We have a connection via the fuel land or lift or relay, apparently. There's the lunar explorer in, or in polar orbit and the lunar explorer relay. Good. John Rod. I believe we already have John Rod on board, don't we? Yes, okay. So, we're in a reasonably high orbit up here, I'm going to try to lower that, um, let's see. Try to get nice and low so that the fuel carrier doesn't have to go far. Good, okay. The next periapsis, good. I'll make it.
Once again, still doing our maneuvers in the dark. Beautiful. We're now in a lovely low stable orbit of Minmus with our cargo and payload ready to be delivered. Now, let's have a look. So given scrap, that's not it. Um, moon mining base, that's it. And apparently a module that we need to pick up as well, of course. Let's get to that mining base. Hopefully they haven't completely run out of power by now. They have not, but they have definitely generated a lot of liquid fuel, my goodness. I've generated more oxidizer, though. Why is there not as much liquid fuel, guys? What have you been doing down here? Leave you alone for a few hours, and what happens? So oxidizer full. Great. Why aren't you generating liquid fuel as well? You know what? Just start all the things, you silly things. Okay, and apparently we have more power than we want that we can play with. So, and they're nice and uh, it's not running. Hang on. Okay, well let's run another drill then. Good. Okay, so we have more oxidizer than liquid fuel, which is bad because oxidizer is dead weight to us uh, for these uh, nuclear engines. Nuclear engines only really need um, liquid fuel to run. But, you know, of course, our rocket like our Atlas, um, our Atlas Explorer and, of course, a fuel depot, they do need oxidizer. So I do want that as well. I just, I'd really hope that they would keep generating liquid fuel. Um, but apparently when it generates liquid fuel and oxygen together, it's a single process. And as soon as they filled up with oxidizer, they said, nah, no more room. Fine. Um, is there anything else I'm missing? We have ore. Good. At this point, the processors, uh, sorry, the uh, drills are generating ore only slightly slower than the processing plant is, gener is using it. We're generating fuel at 0.59 units per second, I guess. And we have more power than we know what to do with, so... Good, I, I, I suppose, I guess, that's because these um, solar cells got a little bit better exposure to the sun. Yep. Um, yeah, good. Great. Wonderful. So, um, hmm. Let's have a quick check of our missions. Is there anything else we can do while we're on the moon? I mean, we can go and get this module, but we don't really have a claw. That's what we need to do. We need to build a, uh, a craft with a claw in its bottom end so it's able to pick up um, that module off the surface. We have a bunch of tourist flights. Uh, we have a Duna mission. Merwin from orbit of Kerbin. Cover Merwin, Kerbin, and Kerbin. Okay. John Rod, he's here with us. He needs to be picked up. Asvin and Asvin Hawk. They are in orbit of Kerbin, okay. Plant a flag on Eve. Orbital station and solar orbit. Albus. You know, I think our little uh, power pack delivery might be the first step in generating our station. So I might just push it out uh, further to the outer Kerbal system, Kerbin system, uh, when we're done with it. So watch that space. Albus. 
two tourists, fly by Minmus, land on Minmus, and another Minmus. And seismic readings of Minmus. Okay, not a moon. So the surface outpost. I see, okay. So if we attach um, if we attach some kind of crew module to this lot, that will help us pass this mission. And it's a nice payday, 193k. So we have one, two. We need we need another three seats to fulfill this. Yes. How are we gonna do that? Hmm. I wish I'd put a docking port on the top of one of these, you know? Well, that's okay. Well, that is okay. Once we're done delivering the power packs, we might be able to attach something to the nose or something. Just something that will provide the extra seats. Hmm. Yes. While we're at that, we may as well occupy those seats. So what do we have for these tourists? So this one wants to go to the moon, the moon, and Minmus. This one's moon, Kerbin, and Eve. Okay. Uh, Kerbin, sun, Kerbin, and Eve. Kerbin, moon, Kerbin. Eve, Eve, sun, Kerbin, Minmus. Okay. So yeah, real real dog's breakfast. They want they want everything. Well, that's okay. We have a few years to to fulfill that, and if we are building uh, you know crew compartments, we may as well put some tourists in them. And, you know, especially if we're building an orbital station. But yeah, we need three more seats. To be attached to this base that is looking very very close because we have everything else <laughs> hmm. I'm gonna have to ponder that a little bit more but anyway for now we're generating we're generating fuel so we can leave these guys alone and go back to the Space Center Let's have a look. Now what should we look at? So we have our Lunar Explorer. Uh, the Explorer that I believe was... What was it doing? I think it was delivering... Um, that's right. One of these things. Um, the orbital scanner, so we don't need that. So let's go for the one back, which is Lunar Explorer 3. I would like to load Lunar Explorer 3, please. Okay, so this one has a seating capacity of 1. So if we launch three of these, eh, it might do it, but... do instead is we might put a crew module here in fact a couple of them and then a command pod at the very top yeah I think we'll do that okay first things first let's reroute from here to here and we can detach that and uh, let's see we want to be able to dock it using docking ports. So that, and then a crew module. Uh, where's the crew module? There we go. Okay. And then another 
one of these. Okay, so that's delta V of 8200, right? Attach another one of those at 7600. And then... And then a command pod. Oh, heat shield. Um, yeah, there we go. Ooh. <laughs> okay, I think we'll leave the shroud on. Okay. Uh, what else? I want to have a parachute. Parachute. Lovely, so Delta V of 7100, as we've seen, is more than enough to get us to the moon, so long as nothing goes wrong on the way up. I think that will definitely work. It's actually brought the price down to 53k, which is cool. A little bit of risk of this thing wobbling itself to pieces. Um, so I might just move this thing up. What is going on? Doesn't want to attach. For some reason. Okay. I don't quite understand. That works, sort of. And that works. Oh, is it too long? Yep, too long. Fine. That worked. Good. Try this one more time. There we go. Now, we want to have some docking ports on these so that they can be sort of passed around from craft to craft. So we'll have these, we'll just rotate them about. sure that they're rotated the right way up. I think that's the right way up. It is not. There we go. Let's make sure that that is centered and stuck out so it's not quite gone too far into the uh, cabin cabin compartment. Lovely, because yeah, we don't really want to have it too far into the compartment, because that way then you look into the IVA, and um, it does not look very nice. There we go. Good. So this is going to be a tourist drive. A tour bus! We'll save that. And of course, just make sure our staging is done properly, so... Uh, 
Okay, well, let's double check our staging properly. So, all engines fire up. Good. First asparagus, second asparagus, third asparagus. First stage separation, second stage engine, second stage separation. So far, so good. And of course, final stage separation being this lot. Yeah, uh, we'll take care of that when we get to it. So this should be able to take a single Kerbal, Kerbal and uh, bring him home. And these guys, they can go on tourist drives. And then when we are good and ready for them, uh, I think hopefully by that point, by the time they've completed their journey, we'll be able to deliver him home using one of our SSTO space planes. Because yeah, I was just wondering, how do we get these guys home? <laughs> Yeah, I think the space plane option is definitely on the table by the time they get home. So hopefully this will prevent it from wobbling itself to pieces. Hey, only one way to find out, right? I'm loath to attach the um, tourists to it right away, but we may as well. Okay. So, tourists... Uh, I really can't tell any of them apart based on their names, so let's make sure that we're bringing the right tourists with us. So surface outpost on the moon, good. Seismic surveys, two tourists safely to their destination. So fly to Minmus, land of Minmus. So that is Genbert and Genlan. Genlan, Genbert. Keep them together because they're both going to Minmus. Good. Albus, oh, rescue. Rescue, rescue, recover. More rescues. Six tourists. Kerbin, Moon, Moon, Minus. So that's Gusfurt. Nope. Uh, moon, Kerbin, Eve. Nope. Uh, Kerbin, Sun, Kerbin, Eve. Nope. Kerbin, Moon, Kerbin. So that's Dodon. Good. And the last one will be empty because we will use that one to fly a Kerbal back home. I think. We could do that. Yeah, because we can't put a Kerbal, uh, a, a tourist in here, they can't actually land on the moon at all. So we definitely do need to need a Kerbinaut to occupy that. Okay, now, last things last, let's, let's add some uh, inventory here, because when we get to our stranded Kerbal, I think we're going to go for the one that we got to return to Scrap Home. So in order to do that, we're going to put in a wrench and some parachutes. Uh, no construction, sorry, EV items. So one of these. That's all he's going to need. Good. And then some parachutes. Only really gonna need the one, I think. But uh, we may as well throw in two just in case of breakage. I think that will do. Delta V just under 7,000 now. Okay, another quick check, making sure that only tourists are on board. Closing up those contracts. So our tour bus. Okay, good. Saving that. And let's hope this works. Oh, making sure the Mechjeb is still on board. Yep, we definitely have Mechjeb. And we have the uh, Kerbal Engineer attached as well. Good. Some solar panels. Good. I think that will do. Hmm, do we have anything resembling an airlock? Something that can be used to get out? So of course the front and the back are airlocks and um... No? Service airlock. 
That is enormous snow. And again, I mean, how much does this thing weigh? 100 kilos. Goes right into it. No. Oh. Hmm. Okay. Uh, that will do. So this craft will fly to wherever it needs to go, and then it can get manipulated and picked up, and docked into various places by other rockets in the vicinity. We will settle for that. Monopropellant? Yeah, why not? We'll take that with us. Okay, well, I think that's everything. Let's see how it flies. Okay, we're launching in the dark again, but we have not wobbled ourselves to pieces. Always a good thing, always a good sign. So let's do our ascent guidance, engage autopilot. So far so good, and we're launching in three, two, one. Good liftoff, thrust to weight at 1.26 and rising. Nice and stable so far. Hundred meters per second, three hundred and sixty kilometers an hour, zero point three three Mach, thrust weight of one point five two kilometers altitude. Beginning our orbital turn. First asparagus stage detached. A little bit of instability there, but we're doing well so far. Okay, we're beginning, beginning to pitch over. I'm having to take over myself. Come on. We do not want to lose these tourists. Come on. Okay, that is going to have to be an abort. Yes, no, maybe. So far, so good. Second asparagus detached, and we have had an explosion. Not entirely sure what just blew up. And we're starting to pitch over again. Okay, and we have lost control, so disengaging autopilot. Okay, staging this engine now. Come on. We need to land this. We must keep these tourists safe. I'm not entirely sure why we just ended up pitching over, but we did. The 
It's just too much drag in the nose for some reason. Throttling right up. 5.4 kilometers altitude. We need to be ready to deploy our parachutes. Okay, deploying chute. Two kilometers altitude at full throttle. Parachute still has not deployed. One kilometer altitude. Parachute has deployed. Okay, descent is now under control. If everything else went wrong, we managed to save our tourists, hopefully. If we can land um, butt first into that, into that lake. We're definitely going to need some bigger tail fins. 200 meters. 150 meters. 100 meters. 50 meters. Throttling up. There's the water. Splash down. Now we need to just gently tip over. Gently enough. There you go, guys. Your first ever um, aboard a space flight. You were very fortunate to have survived that. Okay. Ah, let's recover this vessel. Good. Okay. And some funds as well, that's nice. So our tourists have each gained one point of experience from that flight, that's cool. And that is time. We're gonna have to figure out what went wrong with our tourist bus and fix up the errors before we start putting tourists on it again next time. But in the meantime, thanks for very much for watching and I will see you next time.